Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is another Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, questions will be answered. A lot of people are asking me, is this nightmare campaign all over again? Are we just going to stick farming brutal campaign? So, question being asked of me is, where should I farm? Now that we've got dungeons 21 to 25, if I can farm higher, should I farm higher? Um, and there's been a load of people in the community that have basically found the answers. So thank you to these guys. I'm going to call out a couple because they're the ones that have come to me directly. Others have come to me directly, by the way. I'm, I'm overwhelmed by uh, people that want to try and help this community, which is awesome. But Ramo for sure, Senti, Sophia, and there's a bunch of others as well. Um, thanks for all you do. So what's going on? Let's, let's talk about dungeons first. Where should we farm in dungeons? Should we be farming stage 20? Should we be farming stage 24? Should we be uh, farming stage 25, the last stage? That's where you'd expect we should be farming, but it's not always going to answer the same way. So what's going on here? We've got uh, an example. This is what Ramo did. An example of what happens if we spent uh, 23,040 energy. I'm not entirely sure where, where that number come from. Um, but anyway, that's what it is. I guess it must just divide into all of these different things. So if we were doing stage 20, we would have 1,440 runs versus stage 25, 1,152 runs. Okay, that's the way this is rolling. Basically what it says is, for the drops you get, if you were doing a tournament to try and get points, then you would get more points if you were farming stage 20 than if you were start, uh, farming stage 24 or 25. It's much closer with 24 compared to 25. If we were doing a Dungeon Diver event, then again, you get more points towards Dungeon Divers for stage 20 versus stage 25. Okay, and then we got the kind of breakdown of the drops. So uh, you can see them here, you can see the numbers, but just to try and, I guess, give you an eva my evaluation of this, if you are not doing any of these different events and you want pretty decent return for your investment of energy it feels like stage 24 is the place to go so you get a lot more look at this instead of 29 legendary six star drops you get 47.4 it's a massive gain guys anyone who said it's not worth going above 20 i think you're wrong other than these points scoring you get a lot more six star epics a lot more six star legendaries and stage 24 feels like a really solid place to farm. Now, and a lot of you will, will know this, but if you don't, sometimes a six star epic can be better than a six star legendary. Just because like when you're trying to hyper roll, when you're trying to get that triple roll speed, let's say on a speed piece, if there are four sub stats to go up against, your odds of getting a, a triple roll are actually much worse than if you've got three sub stats to go up against. Um, so some people that's why the speed packs that are epic that get sold actually get snapped up by the whales because they know getting that triple roll speed you've got a, you don't have a good chance but you've got a better chance with that six star epic obviously you want the quad roll i've only had one since i started playing the game two years i've had one quad roll speed in that time so it's extremely rare but obviously you need the piece to even have a chance. Most of the people playing Endgame don't care about five-star gear anymore, but, but that's, that's like 1% of the player base. A lot of the player base will still care about five-star gear, but you want a significant reduction of five-star rares, and you want to be moving into this kind of epic and legendary pool. Well, the epics are about the same, the rares considerably less, and pretty much you start to twist those items into six star epics and legendaries instead of five star rares so there's still a majority rares okay you're still going to get a majority of five star rares from the drops but you get considerably more six stars and considerably more six star epics and legendaries so stage 24 feels solid it feels like a, a solid improvement from stage 20 in my opinion uh, obviously, it takes a lot longer to do, so that's down to whether you want to do it or not. But in terms of just the drops, I would say 24 feels good. Now, this is the weird thing. This is why I say, is it Nightmare Campaign all over again? Because if you look at this, 
for stage 25, you will get a lot less five star rares again. Uh, and you actually, it seems like the pump goes between five star rares and. I mean, where is it? Where are we getting the pump up? We're not really getting a pump up at all. We're just getting less items. We're getting less items for our energy. The only single reason that you would choose to do stage 25 is if you want six star legendary items. And even then, it's incredibly small the amount of improvement you get. This is weird. It feels like it's actually an error. It feels like they've just coded the drop rates wrong for stage 25. Because as it stands with this, now that I understand this information fully, I won't be farming stage 25. I'll be doing 24. So it's very weird. Very weird kind of setup they've done here. The other questions around silver, where should you go? Well, it kind of comes into this more runs, you know, more um, basically your, your silver farm, you're going to get better farm from stage 20. More runs, considerable amount more runs. Um, we know that uh, spider is the best place to farm silver anyway, and you're still going to earn more silver by a reasonable chunk. But stage 24 is not bad as well. But if you're just silver farming, stick with your speed farm stage 20. Keep Septimus out of your vault. Keep the Royal Guards out of your vault, whoever you're using, and stick with 20. The trouble you've got really is if you're building sta uh, stage 24 teams, are you, do you have the luxury of keeping your stage 20 team intact? Uh, and a lot of you probably do because the stage 20 team now really requires champions that are not that great for 24. So uh, stage 20 is where you farm silver. Stage 24 is where you farm items. Stage 20 is where you farm tournament points and dungeon diver points. And if you're the hyper high roller, yeah, if you just you know rocked up in the casino and you're literally like, I'm all in for legendary six star items, then that's the only reason you're going to go to 25. So let's just have a look at potion keeps as well. This is a better story, if I'm honest. They've done a better job of this. There is considerable reason to go to stage 20 on keeps. Okay, so uh, you've got here all of the different drop rates. You've got the energy cost at the top. There is still a chance to get this stupid mystery shard on 20. So dumb. I don't know why they bothered doing this. It's so dumb. Um, in my opinion, any shard drop should just be in addition to. Keep the drop rates the same, by the way. But just in addition to the potions when you get above 15. Any brews. We've got one brew. It's not even like a 10 brews. It's one. 6% chance of getting a brew right through to stage 20. It's so dumb. If I'm on stage 20, I want 10 brews at least if I've got this inconvenient drop. But again, in my opinion, it should be in addition to the potions, not instead of in addition. Such a dumb move. Anyway, but for the rest of it, they've done a good job. So considerably higher rate of drop of superior potions when we're talking about stage 20 even versus stage 19, over double, over double. This is huge. You get no lesser pots. You get um, a considerable jump in greater pots and a massive jump in superior pots. Up until 19, it's kind of, uh, the greater pots make a big jump in 17. Yeah. So we almost double the greater pots from 17 and then we double again at 20. The superior pots don't really scale that well until you hit 20. They, they scale up. It's any any time you can go higher in a keep, it's worth going higher in a keep. Simple as that. Um, I don't even know if they might tweak these numbers because it feels like twenty is extremely strong. But and that's the way it should be. I'm not saying they should tweak the numbers. I'm just concerned that they might. Um, but for potion keeps, absolutely try and punch onto twenty if you can. It's worth farming those overnight if they're going to take you a while. They shouldn't take that long. It's still not that hard to do. I don't think. Um, as long as you've got some half decent comps in the game. Uh, one last question to answer then, and that is going to be around dungeons. So for dungeons, what accuracy do you, do you require? And uh, we've got this tool on the website. So if you're on the website and you go into tools and then you see raid stages tool. Yeah, any, any member, free member, don't have to be paid, can access any of these tools. They're all super cool tools, by the way. 
this is a really good one though so you can choose where you want to find in the game so i could say clan boss clan boss stage ultra nightmare whatever and then i could be like right what resistances and accuracies do i need so in particular here i want to talk about the new dungeons so dungeons uh dragon stage 20 what we're used to the white number is his resistance the yellow number is the accuracy you need to beat it okay that's the way this works so what we're saying here is if you're fighting stage 20 he's got a 200 resistance to be you know 97 percent sure you're going to be landing your debuffs you want 225 accuracy okay we already knew that i've always said good rule of thumb take the, the stage of the dungeon and times it by 10 um but when we come to stage 25 the accuracy and resistance did not go up so i wasn't aware of that so basically you can run the same accuracy or resistance that you were running for stage 20 right the way through to 25 again i don't know if they're going to change this because i'm surprised it's not gone up honestly i'm, I'm really surprised um even the waves there's no one there's no wave content here that's fast for for one so everything's under 100 speed and there's no wave content that's got high resistance so i thought it'd be a bit more like doom tower where the waves have much higher resistance and much and yeah they're super tanky and they've got crazy damage outputs like 15k attack 17k attack they hit like an absolute freight train if you let them do damage to you but they will not have any higher resistance let me just check that 24 is not different no exactly the same so that's one more question to answer what accuracy do you need it's exactly the same as 20 if you're running 225 accuracy you'll find right the way through to the top so look guys hope that's useful hope that's answered a lot of your questions if anyone's got any more cool tips than that put them down below for people to read i've been hell hades i will see you later